Welcome back. One of the tasks that a table saw really excels at is cutting parallel edges. Cut one edge on the table saw, flip the whole board around, and cut the other edge, and you're pretty much guaranteed of getting parallel edges. But even though it looks like I'm in fairly decent shape and can handle these big panels, the fact of the matter is they're a little tough. So I'm gonna make it easy on myself and I'm gonna use a little different technique. What I'm gonna do is use the Festool TS55 track saw with the guide rail to cut one edge of each panel. Then, with the panel a little lighter in weight and a little narrower, I can more easily put that edge against the table saw fence and cut the other edge. I'll still be guaranteed of perfectly parallel edges and I'll save myself a little bit of effort. So let's get started. Now I'm using a piece of chalk just to mark the edge that I just cut so I'll know what edge goes to the table saw fence. And let me show you how I'm setting this up. Now I spent a considerable amount of time getting the boards arranged to get the very best look that I could. And on this board, for instance, this is actually two pieces joined in the middle and they have a very similar grain pattern, but it's gonna look a lot better if the middle stays in the middle. So what we wanna do is cut the correct amount from both sides so that this line in the middle stays dead center. And the easy way to do that is with your tape measure. Now these boards are gonna wind up being 14 and a half inches wide. Half of that's seven and a quarter. So if you position your tape with the seven and a quarter inch mark right on that joint and then measure over to 14 and a half, that's where you need to make the cut. Now this one is pretty thin, real small cut, but I'm gonna make a little tick mark right there. That's the right spot for that. Then what I'm gonna do is use the combination square and adjust it until it is lined up exactly with that mark. Then I can use my combination square and make my marks. And I wanna make one at the end, one at the middle, and one at the other end. And the reason for that is it's a good double check. You know, they always say measure twice, cut once. When you lay the guide rail down and line up this end and this end, you should be able to see that mark in the middle and it should be right on the guide rail edge. And uh, if it's not, something could be off and you want to check that. Now, there are boards that I have glued up that are three pieces. And in the case of a three piece piece, I'd like for the two pieces on either side to frame the piece in the center and those two pieces should be the same width. So we basically do the same thing, except in this instance, we find the center of the center board. And in this case, it's five and seven eighths. So I'm gonna go um, to exactly right there will be the center. I'm gonna make a little tick mark there. And then again, put my seven and a quarter mark on that, and then I'm able to mark exactly where to cut. I'm 
just double checking my dimension. The first thing we're going to cut is the side pieces, the four side pieces, the tall ones and the shorter ones for the bookcases. And that dimension is 14 and three quarter inches. So I'm set up, fence is set. The edge that we cut with the Festool track saw will be against the fence and we'll cut off the other side. I think we're ready to go. Yep. <laughs> shelves are 14 and a half. I've readjusted the fence. I actually raised the blade just a little bit because I'm going to cut the two bottom shelves, the one inch thick bottom shelves first. And we're ready to go with that. We're all set. These three quarter inch thick panels are going to be quite a bit easier. Uh, right off the bat, they're 25% less weight than a one inch thick panel. <clears throat> so let's get to cutting these. By the way, maple is really, really easy to burn. And one of the things I've found is typically you set your table saw blade so that pretty much the bottom of the gullet is even with the top of the cut, or some people even say like the middle of the gullet. I found that if the entire gullet is above the level of the wood, I get a lot less burning. My theory is, is that being completely above the wood allows the blade to cool just a bit as it's spinning. Now, admittedly, with the blade at that high attack angle, you could get some tear out on the bottom side, but so far I've not gotten any with this forest woodworker blade, so I like doing it this way because there's no burning at all on the wood. Okay, this is the last one, and we'll be ready to cut these to length. Marking all these boards, getting their relative location in the two bookcases. Unit A is the shorter unit, unit B is the taller unit. This is piece B1, which is the first shelf up from the bottom one. So I've got a bottom shelf, and then this is number one coming up from the bottom. And what I really want to do first is square off one end of these boards. Now I've already taken a look and decided that this is the end I want to square first and then I'll cut to length down here. And the way I'm going to go about that, I need to take off just as little as possible. This is my shortest combination, so I'm really right on the edge of having a board that's long enough. So I want to take off just the smallest amount that I possibly can. Now first thing that I'm going to do is using a good high quality T-square, I'm going to strike a sharp pencil line across this end. 
And that's going to be my reference line to make sure I get my guide rail on straight and square. Now I want to line this up real carefully. Make sure I get it just absolutely perfect. And then clamp that down so it doesn't move. Okay, that looks good. Now, just as a double check, I'm going to take my square, line it up on these two edges that we know are perfectly parallel, and just double check, make sure my guide rail is square, and it is. Then I want to just clamp the board down to make sure that it doesn't move while it's being cut. It's always better to be safe. Make sure your uh, workpiece is not moving around. Put these good safe glasses back on. We're ready to cut. didn't cut anything, just sawdust down there at that end. So that's good. Nice, slick, beautiful end. Now I'm going to cut all the ends, one end on every board first, and then I'll come back and cut everything to length. And here is shelf B. And again, I've already determined that this is the end where I want to make my squaring cut. And I'll strike a nice line across here. I need just about as much length as I can get on this one too because it's these two are the shortest combinations that I have they are very much right on the edge I can actually move that back just a smidge I'd like to take a little more than less so Cut it right about there. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to get all these uh, ends cut, and then I'm going to show you how we're going to cut these to length, and hopefully get them all to match. 
Now with one end trimmed off all the boards, I'm going to cut these to length in pairs. And what I've done is I've taken, uh, this is bookshelf A, and the top and the bottom piece. And I've carefully lined up these three sides, and so now this is the end that needs to be cut off. And I want this to be exactly 59 inches long. So what I'm going to do is go out here close to the edge and I'm going to make a mark right on the 59 inch. And I'm going to do the same thing over here on this side, right at 59 inches. And then I'm going to take my T-square and hopefully those two tick marks will line up exactly. And they do. So all I really have to do is connect the dots. I'm using a sharp pencil here, but I'm making a pretty dark line because I want to be able to sight accurately to this guide rail. And now we're really getting down to where we're going to be really, really picky about the alignment of this. I don't think I can get it any better than that. Perfect. Yep. And we're ready to cut these two to their final length. Now I've set the depth on this to be able to go through both boards, hopefully. shelf and it's too heavy to pick up both pieces at the same time all right it only took about a half an hour to get the rest of the panels cut to their final finished length and now I'm done every piece of wood is the size it needs to be and it's ready to go for the next phase of the project which is cutting the joinery now there's a couple of things I need to do. I, I need to put my track saw away and get out my router. I need to clean up just a little bit and I need to do a tiny little bit of rearranging in my shop to make some room for cutting the dados. So I'm going to do that. In the meantime, why don't you grab a cup of coffee or the beverage of your choice, take a little break and then click on part 3B and we'll jump right into cutting those dados. Thanks for watching. See you in a couple of minutes.